Hey, what's up, my little title tells and what's up, Sussex Squad? Y'all come and sit down and shut the door. This is serious. If you guys don't know, Kate's been missing for over two months, right? Um, Concha Calleja has come out and said, baby, Kate never left the hospital. Go watch my old video if you guys want details. The UK press are still mad at William for literally uh, wanting peace. And they're saying, baby, why don't you worry about tell us where Kate is and stop worrying about foreign affairs? Oh, here's the thing. Remember I said in the last video, what could have happened to Kate that would be so embarrassing, so groundbreaking, so detrimental to the soul of the monarchy that they are doing everything they can to change the subject? You guys, I think I have the answer. Because the answer might lie into who hurt Kate if she's not hurt who made sure that Kate is in a state where she cannot be seen, where there is no visual proof, there is no audio proof, and there is no proof at all that she will ever return in any capacity to work? Now, Concha Calleja, again, she is a heavyweight uh, Spanish royal rota, but on top of that, she is a very distinguished forensic investigator, Arthur, all this stuff, okay? Go ahead and check her out. Watch the old video if you want details. Okay. What could it be? Now, a lot of people have thought and speculated that William's involved. William and Kate, there's a bot going on with that. We're not going to get into that. But we are going to get into the fact that people think, why can't you say something? Why would this damage the monarchy? Because this goes to the very core of the monarchy. Do you guys realize that if there is actually something wrong with Kate, as many people speculate there is, as I've speculated this is, uh, there is, you guys, William could shake the monarchy because you know that the monarchy is fully exempt from anything, even prosecution. The same way Andrew hid in um, the Royal Lodge that even defied the wishes of the American government. Yes, I'm American, so of course I think my government's the strongest, but just the same. The same Andrew that got away from any type of investigation with Scotland Yard, with whatever, right? You realize that that same system will wrap themselves around William wrap themselves around the monarchy and protect, protect William. Why is this important? They know that it will protect William. I'm going to get into the actual details. They know it will protect William unless if what happened to Kate was so horrible, so unbelievable, so unspeakable, but more importantly, so unforgivable that it may cause the nation to revolt and completely reject the monarchy ad nauseum. If we know that the future king and the man to take the throne has done something that the most ardent of royal supporters find morally and legally repulsive and reprehensible, the monarchy is done. Now, let's get into what would give William this also uh, awesome array of powers and how it all wraps up into a neat little bow? This is from Lake Maple Leaf Fields. Go ahead and follow her on Twitter. Her at is, her handle is at Fields Leaf, F-I-E-L-D-S Leaf, right? She says, just jotting this down real quick. Now, she is a very, very skilled legal mind, analytical, forensic. She specializes also in uh, forensic true crime. You guys, listen to what she has to say. Y'all ready for this? Okay. Just jotting this, just jotting this real quick because it's mind boggling what I'm looking at right now. But let me just say this real quick. In addition to being completely exempt from all criminal and social laws, the monarch, in this case, either the late queen, the current king, but when William takes over, William will be the current king. The monarch 
The king has been exempt from a number of other laws and has directly interfered or influenced a thousand laws before they became legislation. Again, if William takes the throne, he is exempt from all criminal and social laws. Now, even though technically he's not yet exempt, he is the heir to the throne. They will protect, swarm around him and protect them like toast soldiers if he does anything untowards to anyone. She continues, these laws and bills are revived by the monarch's lawyers. I'm sorry. These laws and bills are reviewed by the monarch's lawyers in the monarch's interest before they become law. Additionally, they have introduced over 30 laws preventing police from entering royal residences to investigate crimes or offenses without the monarch's consent. Remember how we were joking? Oh my God, we need to do a proof of life. We need to do a wellness check on Kate. I don't know if they have wellness checks in the UK, but in the US, wellness check is when you call the police and you say, I'm afraid something very dastardly happened to this person. I'm afraid they're in danger or not well. Please. Can you check on them? The police actually show up on the residence, knock the door and say, hi, wellness check. So the police will go and actually see, is this person okay? As much as we joked about that, that will never happen. They could say for the next 30 years that Kate has turned into a recluse and doesn't want to see royal life and she's hiding quietly. And do you know that the police will never have the right to enter or even investigate? You need the monarch's consent. Now, who knows what Charles will give his consent, but we know once William becomes monarch, he will not give his consent. Let's also not forget there's been all these rumors or articles actually in the paper about how Charles is preparing his secession plan because they fear that Charles has pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer, if you guys don't know, is one of the most lethal forms. And this would explain why Harry got on the plane, hopped, skipped and jumped and made his way over there and even told his dad, listen, Pa, if you need me, I'm here. It's all starting to make sense now. They said the late queen has directly influenced housing, pension, NHS, and animal welfare laws and managed to be exempt from equity laws. Uh, SE discrimination, you know, let's talk about, you know, I can't say it, but blank discrimination laws and the Health and Safety Work Act of 1974. That is just a short list of how the employees are getting stiffed. The monarch and certain members of the family are exempt from jury duty, taxes and financial sanctions put in place by the EU on various countries and governments around the world, including North Korea, Iran, Sudan, African nations, Libya, Burundi, and the Ukraine. While the River Dee in Scotland is under specific fishing conservation laws to protect the salmon and trout in the river, the monarch is exempt from all those laws and any intervention for investigation by police, which allows them to charge $630 a week for anglers to fish on the river through their own private fishing licenses. They are also exempt from animal welfare laws, environmental laws, pollution regulations, and carbon emission laws. The king can't even be investigated because he, and thus in many situations, the royal household under him are exempt from criminal and social regulations and prosecution. Are you seeing why they might be going tight-lipped on Kate? As much as I'm not a royalist, let's not forget that institution is big money for the tabloids. They cannot afford to let it fall. Let's also not forget they are the bastion symbol symbolism of white supremacy. I know they don't want that to fall. Mm. There's more. She says, we'll get into a much more detailed discussion, but... But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Wait until you see the real estate and investment info to think the king is getting paid for altered laws where he was actually supposed to pay the government and the people. Someone in the royal household is a genius and some in the government just as dole, just on the dole to allow all this stuff to pass without question. They must be being paid, I think. UK is getting the short end of the stick big time. You need an intervention. We'll talk. Now, she adds a note. She says, I'm going to add a note here because it's been floating across my mind for the past couple of hours. Doing all this research, I've come across new info and old info, stuff I knew and stuff that elaborates on stuff I thought I knew. When you deal with legalize, legals, 
all the time, you learn to pay attention to the words that don't always jump out. Today, I noticed the words that didn't jump out and it really got my mind racing. I always knew the monarch had legal custody of all minor grandchildren. That info was put out when Charles and Diana forced, uh, divorced years ago and uh, Will and uh, Harry were still young. Now, this is probably one of the reasons in my mind, Megan refuses to go back to the UK, but keep going. Charles could technically take custody of Will's three children or even Harry's too. Although, admittedly, that wouldn't fly because as she put, that would be one hell of a fight since they're American citizens as well as British and their mother is American. The UK king has no jurisdiction or rights in the US. They wouldn't even need to be a part, be a part of the divorce. Death custodial any kind of situation or anything, he could just wake up one day and say, mine. Now that's crazy. I knew also that the same rule applied to William and Harry, but what I did not know, or rather never noticed before, that rule does not apply to William and Harry. That does not apply to William and Harry being minors. Effectively, if Charles wanted Harry back to the UK, he could simply lure him over and then remand him to stop from leaving. The rule for custody of children of the monarchs does not specify they have to be minors. The rule clearly states minor grandchildren. Hold on. Guys. Again, this is important to know. The monarch can seize people regardless of if they are minors. The rule clearly, listen, Effectively, listen, the rule for custody of children of the monarch does not specify that they have to be mon monar minors. The rule clearly states minor grandchildren, but the rule says all the monarchs are offspring. It does not specify minor grandchildren in another spot. It says children, but it doesn't say minor. That would imply that if the king wanted to keep his sons on the crown estate or specifically in the country, he could. Remember, all the driver's license and passports in the UK are issued by and under the name of the king. While the monarch travels without a passport, members of the family all have special passports issued by the monarch. He could, and this is why you remember Megan kept saying, I need my passport. I need my passport. And everybody was like, what is the big deal? No, it's a special passport that you get when you are members of the family. They have special passports entered by the monarch and they would not give it to Megan. He could easily, easily revoke them and they wouldn't need the government to do it. While Harry's children remain in the U.S., there is a level of protection there. The king has no powers or rights in the U.S. and the U.K. custody laws can't be enforced in the U.S. either without a divorce, especially for grandparents if both or one of the parents is alive and there's no grounds to remove parental custody. But if they go to the U.K., it's a whole different story. Even Harry is running a risk if he goes to the U.K. and gets his father on a bad day. Now, that's very important to know. But how does this apply to William? I think it lets you know, first of all, that was made by the king, that if the king even sees his own offspring as a threat, he can close ranks. This is the type of power they're playing at. This is the type of power William's playing at. And this is the type of power William will get sooner rather than later. What if their plan is to keep Kate hidden, this, that, and the third, until William finally descends to the throne? And then they tell us the truth of what really happened to Kate. I'm just saying, I know it seems out there. But as the rumors of that the Greek papers are saying that Charles has pancreatic cancer are true. And we know that pancreatic cancer has a very low survival rate. Again, whatever God has planned for Charles, so it will be, right? His will be, will be done, right? Um, pray for Charles if you want. Don't. It doesn't matter. God already has it written. What I am saying is, Let's just say the secession happens sometime in the next year. Let's just say that one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why, um, who was it? Uh, Charles is even planning his secession is because he knows that the future of the monarchy is at risk because of something William did. And he's going to have to give up the throne in order for the monarchy to survive. Because once the monarchy, once William takes power, there will be no more questions, right? Except for, except for, except for the will of the people. And it seems like that might be more than anything what Kensington Palace is worried about, the will of the people, assuming anything's happened to Kate. Now, they said 
Maple Field says, it's had my head buzzing. I'm going to do some more research on this, but I touched on the mental health laws in the UK, particularly the guardianship laws for adults. Given that Harry has publicly made his diagnosis for PTSD, anxiety, dyslexia, ADHD, and depression known, I'm curious to see how strict those guidelines are given that the king is exempt from much of them. The one major saving grace here is that if Charles has cancer and William inherits sooner or later, Harry and his children are not descendants of William. The line of succession, yes, but not direct descendants. So that threat would disappear. Things that pop through my head when you know it's people who are exempt from most of the rules have special rules made just for them and for all intents and purposes, just ignore the rest of the rules. Again, you guys, doesn't this put this whole succession plan and everything else that Charles had planned, doesn't that put that in a different light? Does it not? Are they trying to protect the crown, protect the throne. It does not matter who is sitting on it. Power must be maintained for power's sake. And if we do not see Kate for much longer, and let's just say Charles re uh, like gives the throne up in June or July. William, remember he said he wouldn't have that much pomp and circumstance. They signed him in as king, a small little ceremony. And then shortly after that, they let us know that Kate's fallen ill, unfortunately. And they also let us know, unfortunately, that William will have to rule alone. I don't know, guys. Six months ago, I would have thought all these theories to be preposterous. But now in the world we live in, they're starting to look more and more likely. Anyway, you guys, let me know what you think in the comments. I'll talk to you later. Bye.